In today's video, we're going to show you how to take an invent assembly with some constraints that we've already created and then use those constraints to animate in the Inventor Studio environment and then render out for an animation or a little movie that you can show to, to your colleagues or the client. So the first thing to do is go to our environments tab and you'll see there I've got my Inventor Studio command available to me. And what it does is it opens up in the Inventor Studio. You'll see there, there's a render tab that's now been put up. And the two renders that I can do is render image. Okay, so a still image or render animation. Now with the render animation, okay, I first need to set up animation and animation. So with that, I go to my animations folder over here. I right click new animation. And when I click on the plus button, you'll see there is animation two. If I want to um, rename it, just click on its on the uh, animation two slowly twice, and allow me to rename it. Then to activate it, I can just double click on it, and you'll see there an animation timeline pops up at the bottom. Now, what I'm going to also do as well is just change the um, appearance of these some of these components, so it's just more easy for us to see. Okay, so let's just go over here, and then the bucket as well. Let's give it a a red color over here okay and let's do glossy black I actually want to change this to gunmetal polished okay so now that we've got this uh, we want to maybe take a look at the um, at the lighting so with the lighting right click edit you'll see there it's infinity pool the exposure maybe just put that up a little bit so it, you can see it a little bit better um, you can also display the scene image or you can actually change what you want so you'll see how the lighting changes as i put this into different rooms okay i like that Okay, so now that we've done that, um, what we can do is we can um, run that that animation. So I'm gonna go find my my constraint, which is this Mate 20 over here, 500 mils. I'm just gonna go rename it and so say run this. So that next time I come in here, it's a little bit easier to find. Right click on the constraint and animate constraint. And what you'll see over here is, um, first of all, the action. So the action, we're gonna run a constraint and at least you start at 500 and I want it to end at 1500 and then you've got the time so it starts at zero seconds and I want to run it up to five seconds over there and okay so there you see there that it's actually it's now run to five um, you know to 1500 millimeters so if I play it back you'll see there how this piston over here is basically going from 500 millimeters to 1500 millimeters okay so once that is done you'll see there just keeps on running at the bottom of the timeline and I don't want that I actually just want it to be the five seconds that I I've specified over here so if I select my um, so to expand the timeline there you can see there is my constraint and it's running from 500 mils to 1500 millimeters and the velocity you can see there's 20 60 20 so it's um, for 20% of the of the time it'll accelerate to its maximum velocity then it'll keep constant velocity for 60% of that five seconds and then it'll deramp or it'll de decelerate uh, down to zero again what I can also do is I can grab this and I can make the animation longer so now it'll run up to 7.5 seconds okay so we're gonna just keep it at, at five seconds over there once I've done that, I can say, look, let's go and change the length of this animation. At the moment, I've currently got it set to 30 seconds. I can either go and change that manually to five seconds or I can click to fit current animation. So you'll see there now, it'll look at the timeline, see how long you're running animations for, it'll stop after the last time. Okay, so there we go. So now it's five seconds, you can see there, one, two, three, four, five. So once that's done, I can now go and uh, render this animation. So rendering the animation, select render animation, and what allows me to do is set the 
um, you know how big this, this is going to be. 1920 by 1080, 320 by 240. When you initially start out, I would say do the 320 by 240 as it will just run quicker. You can see what the animation is going to look like. Is it jerky? Is it not jerky? What does it look like? What does the lighting look like? So at least then you can um, tweak it without having to run a long animation. And then once you're happy with the animation, then you can go and run it. With the output, okay, um, there's two different types of outputs. You can either output the entire animation in one go. And if I just go and save that, you'll see there it'll output it as a WMV or an AVI file. Or I can do it as a, um, a bunch of images. Now that then can be, oh, sorry, not that one. Uh, so here's the format, <laughs> here's the animation or here's the bunch of images. So select that and you'll see there, I'm able to then go do PNG, JPEG, bitmap, GIF, or TIFF. Okay, so you can see I've just done some drawings over here already. Okay. So now what we can do is we can also say the time range. So either it's from zero to one, zero to two, zero to five, zero to 10 seconds, or the entire, um, the entire animation. And we can also do it in reverse. So five to zero seconds or zero to five seconds. Now, when, you know, which one's better to use over here? I actually prefer um, exporting out to these stills and then putting it into either the video producer that you get inside um, Inventor or another producer like Camtasia or something like that. Um, what it allows me to do is it's just got more control over if something goes wrong. So I'm rendering you know, you render it overnight, you come back into the office the next morning, and you find that it stopped at image 200 out of 300. Now, if you're running a, an animation, it would run the animation or the WMV or AVI file, and you wouldn't know where it stopped. You'd actually have to run it from scratch again. You can't, you know, say start from three seconds. As with the stills, you can say, okay, well, it stopped at still number 70, which was three seconds. Now, let me start it three seconds again, run it through, and then it'll at least just add on to that, um, onto your images over there. So you end up um, just starting off from where, you know, your computer crashed. So what we can do here now, we choose our frame rate as well. And then on the renderer, we say how many iterations do we want per rendering? So I'm gonna say five. It's not gonna be a very good render, but it'll just go through the render very quickly so that I can see what it looks like afterwards. And, oh, let's just go to output again quickly. Say where I want to output it to. And click on render. And there you'll see there it renders through each one. So it's going through the uh, iterations quite quickly. And you can see it then opens up the buckets over there. And you can see the total is 76 frames that it's going to render out over there. So once that's done, we can then go to our video producer over here or something like Camtasia and go drag and drop the shots into here. So I'll go to where my file is, drag and drop it over here and then stitch it all together. See, there's a save button over there. So once this is done, um, I just want to go back here. Uh, so we basically finished, I mean, that's if I render animation again, and I, you know, do 1920, output to the same place. And, you know, if I put up my frame rate, so say it's 20 frames per second, and let's take us back up to 32. And just go render, we'll see what happens here now. So it takes a lot longer to render your 32 iterations. And you can see there the frames have also jumped up to 101. Okay. So what you'll see there, when it gets up to 32, notice your render time, and then you just times that by 101, and you'll get basically the amount of time it's gonna to take to render every single, um, every single frame for you to put it into your, your animation. Okay. So just to recap quickly, um, when you are creating this, um, you know, put in 
a a low um, width and height or render output um, then as well you know put your frame rate well you know frame rate doesn't you know you can put at the, the final frame rate but just for the renderer those iterations over there are going to tell you how long it's going to take to render and also the quality that you're going to get out um, with rendering and that's it for me thanks very much for watching